So the next talk will be given by by Sophie Dim uh, about a near Earth object model calibrated to Earth impactors. So you have actually 12 minutes. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Sophie, and I am fra uh, coming from Curtin University, and I work under the Desert Fireball Network. I'm a second year PhD student, and I want to tell you a bit about some of the work that I have been doing. So a lot of us are in this room because we are interested in meteors and meteoroids and asteroids and fireballs. Uh, a lot of people want to know what they're made out of. A lot of people want to know where they're going. I'm mostly interested in where they came from. So one of the questions, I guess, to sort of cut to the chase is, can we model fireballs as material originating from the main asteroid belt? So meteors, we know that they mostly come from comets that have fragmented and they've left some of their material either on a stream or it's been dispersed from that stream and then Earth intersects it and that's how we get most of our meteors, they're from comets. We know that a lot of the near Earth objects that are asteroidal and like one kilometer, half a kilometer, they have migrated from the main asteroid belt, they've come to near Earth space and their mechanism of coming here is slightly different. But for the centimeter to decimeter population, where do they come from? Is there a combination of uh, dispersed meteors? Is it uh, material coming from the main asteroid belt? That's what I'm really interested in understanding. So how does material come from the main asteroid belt? If we look here at a density plot of where macros large asteroids are in heliocentric distance versus orbital inclination, you can see that there are a couple of gaps in the asteroid belt. These gaps are caused by resonances. They can be mean motion resonances with Jupiter, which Ariane touched on yesterday, such as the 31J, 52J, and 21J. Or it could be a secular resonance, such as the new six that's highlighted there. And what these resonances do is that they can increase the eccentricity of an orbit, and that will bring it closer to Earth, um, bringing it into the near Earth space. And so, Trying to model material coming from the main asteroid belt, not maybe can also um, help inform other aspects such as maybe physical processes of the near Earth environment. Do uh, asteroids collide and create lots of small objects when they're in near Earth space? Do they disrupt when they get close to the sun? Tidal disruption, there's sort of all of these uh, pieces of information out there for large asteroids, but I'm really interested in what's happening for the smaller population. And can we study this transition between main belt material or dispersed meteor streams, sort of the weak and the fragile and the strong material and all that stuff? I'm using data from the Global Fireball Observatory. I've subsetted uh, fireballs that are in near Earth space. They are sporadic, so not associated with the meteor stream, and they're greater than 10 grams. And overall, I'm using a data set of 1,220 fireball events to create my model. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of what I do to my data because everything can be a work in progress and I'd love to hear some of your feedback on it. Um, the aim of uh, these steps is to not create an entirely debiased fireable data set, but to try and have it debiased in terms of orbital parameters. So semi major axis eccentricity and inclination, trying to unweight by those factors. The first thing I account for is detection efficiency, so I'm trying to boost up the numbers of the small and slow objects. So assuming that detection efficiency is just directly related to how bright the fireball was, that would be the intensity as a function of velocity to the power of 5 and mass to the power of 2 over 3. Um, I weighted a subset of fireball data till it matched the debiased distributions of the CAMS data from Yeniskin's 2016 paper, and I found that this weighting was affecting masses smaller than 500 grams. So I apply some sort of weighting to account for detection efficiency. I then want to weight my data by its Earth impact probability. So trying to replicate what objects are actually out there, but we can only see the objects that we encounter with the Earth. So this involved only for, uh, looking at its most recent history for a fireball event, not looking at its long-term dynamics. 
Uh, so this was created with some numerical integrations with rebound, um, figuring out which fireballs spent more time close to Earth, as far away from Earth for the moid distance, and then using that as a relative weighting between fireball events. And this is the most significant weighting for the data set, and it spans about six orders of magnitude. So it's a really strong factor as to in the debiasing step. And I account for gravitational focusing. Uh, I then bin the data. So looking at this top line, it sort of says GFO as a function of semi-major axis, eccentricity, inclination, and H. I'm working in absolute magnitude, but that's basically just the log space of mass. And so you can consider that's just a size factor. And we've got large step sizes such that we're kind of uh, able to encount, encompass most of the observational uncertainties within just the binning. And lastly, I was scaling up the total numbers that we were observing to the expected impact flux of the Earth. Um, this is currently not a free parameter in the model, it's just some information put in, so it doesn't really have too much of an effect in the end. And so what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to take my quote unquote debias fireball distribution and I'm trying to match it up with a residence time distribution. A residence time distribution is where we would expect objects to be in near Earth space if they've come from the main asteroid belt. So you can see if we were to populate, I say we, this is um, some models that I've taken from David Nesvorny and using his simulations. Uh, so if you were to put some particles into a resonance and then you integrate it over time, you will get an orbital distribution of where you expect those particles to be. You can see a bit of a density map here in semi-major axis and eccentricity on the left and semi-major axis and inclination on the right. And so this is where we expect particles to be if they come from the main asteroid belt. And so we can try and figure out what combination of these different distributions create what we see. So there are 12 different source regions that um, David created, and one of them is the Jupiter family comet region. Uh, there's some inner belt combinations, and most of them are other mean motion, resonance, mean motion resonances with Jupiter. So what I'm interested, or I've been interested in so far, is just figuring out what fraction of these sources create the GFO population. And it's a free parameter alpha, which is a function of size. So I'm looking at size dependence of these source strengths as well. And instead of a nice little handshake, it's um, some statistics. Um, we optimize this alpha parameter with a multi nest, which is a MC MC sampler. Um, using finding the maximum log likelihood and other interesting not interesting stuff um, so if we were to take a combination of five sources and we each source was to have five four alphas so the size dependence brings in more free parameters so currently fitting for 16 free parameters um, with our 1220 fireballs um, a lot of this progress has been sort of working with how much data do we have, how many free parameters can we actually fit for, what flexibility in the model do we have. So it's been a lot of trial and error. Um, but basically what we've been finding is that if we're looking at the mass of the meteoroid on the x-axis and the fractional component from these different source regions, we find that the NU6 resonance, so an inner main belt resonance, uh, can account for the distribution of most, or sorry, uh, about 50, more than 50% of the like 100 kg large uh, meteoroids. And then that fades out as you get to the smaller stuff. Um, the 3 1 resonance kind of has a continuous contribution. It seems to match and create the fireball distribution kind of nicely. Um, then the 2 1 and 5 2 mean motion resonances have sort of a continuous contribution as well. And then finally, uh, the Jupiter family comet region seems like the nice fit for the distributions for the smaller objects. So looking underneath one kg, which is about halfway on this log scale, down to about 10 grams. So sort of seeing that transition between the maybe in and out source things and Jupiter family comet source range, source things. Um, and just to note that NeoMod, which is the current um, near Earth object model that predicts down to h equals 28 or 100 meters, which is way off to the left side of that plot. So um, we're working in a slightly different size space to other near Earth object models at the moment. And so what you can do is then once you know, create a combination of these source regions, you can then sample that model. And so if you were to 
look at the GFO data that's been weighted and scaled, and then you take 12, uh, the same number of samples from the model predictions, you can then compare the distributions of the output. Um, and one thing, I, two things I want to draw your eye attention to is that the semi-major axis distribution for the model has more of a hump at one AU. And so I think that's because we are not taking into account any collisional effects. So we currently haven't taken that into account. So there are lots of evolved orbits. And so that is one of the next things that we want to introduce. And then hopefully we can get that distribution to match a bit more. And then another thing is that the inclination distribution doesn't quite match either. And hopefully introducing some more physical effects can help match those up. Uh, so in summary, just trying to model the fireable data with distributions from main belt escapees. And sources show the sort of transition from maybe main belt stuff to Jupiter family comet type orbits. And the next steps are to include more, more physical things uh, like collisional effects and just testing maybe destruction at low perihelion. And these are all to do with um, editing the input distributions. So there's some more, more work to be done. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sophie. We have plenty of time for questions, so let's start with the audience. Yes, Shulemi? Um, when you do the numerical integration, do you take into account the non-gravitational forces because it's going to make a huge difference for the dynamics? Currently, no. <laughs> okay, so yeah. it's all gravitational and based on your mod, basically. Mm. The, the whole thing. Okay, thank yeah. you. Other questions? Check online. I don't see questions. No more questions? Okay, then we thank you again, Sophie.